Hi, it's Angie Atkinson with QueenBeing.com, and today we're going to talk about how narcissists can be jealous of their own children and why. All right, let's get started. Okay, so could narcissists really be jealous of their own children? Is that really a real thing? I mean, what? But here, look, so often people, you know, my clients are people who were or are in relationships with toxic narcissists. And they get in touch with me because they need help either getting out of or getting over a toxic relationship. Okay, and a lot of times um, they need someone to help them let go of one or to find themselves again. And sometimes they need no contact coaching, right? Well, one of the most common issues that I hear with my clients, and I also see this in a lot of my SPAN group members, is, is that they often have also got a narcissistic parent who really shaped parts of them and without their even realizing what was happening. Okay, so there are parents, oh, oh, of course, then there are also the parents who, who are currently struggling with narcissistic co-parents, a spouse or, a, or just a, an ex, due in part to whether that person's um, getting along with the kids, due in part to the jealousy of the kids that the narcissist displays in the relationship. It really causes a lot of trouble for both sides. So, and this is unfortunately true even when the kids are their own, whether or not they're a step-parent, okay? Ultimately, one of the questions that almost all of these people ask me, whether it's from the adult child of a narcissist or it's from, you know, um, from the perspective of someone who is forced to co-parent with a narcissist, is the same question. Why are narcissists jealous of children? Normal people aren't jealous of children, right? So, I'm Angie Atkinson, and that's what we're going to talk about today at QueenBeing.com. So let's do it. I'm going to break this video into two sections for you. First, the narcissistic mother section, and then the narcissistic father, because there are things that are different between each of those two archetypes, so to speak. All right? So first, we're going to start with describing your everyday average narcissist mother, okay? But before I do that, let me begin with a quick story. And this comes from my own life. So the other day, this just happened like earlier this week, okay? My daughter, she's only eight, she'll be nine in November, okay? But she was wearing a tank top and suddenly I was aware that there were certain signs of future development in her chest area, you know, just a little tiny, just the very beginning of, this, of the signs, okay? Uh, so I immediately thought of one story that was told to me by one of my clients in which her father had actually unfortunately sexualized her and as a result, her mother retaliated and became insanely jealous. Well, this was so, she became so jealous that she couldn't even bring herself to take her daughter to get a bra when she needed one, even when she desperately needed one. Okay, so this this client, long story short, I don't want to go into a bunch of personal details here, but what it comes down to is that it was a pretty tragic thing this woman did to her daughter, and it really affected my client throughout her life up to this point. So anyway, because of that situation, that day, the day that I noticed this, I literally took my daughter to shopping and bought her a little bra wardrobe, a little tiny one, a little starter one, probably five or six different bras, you know, and she doesn't really need one. These are mostly little pullover bras with a little padding to help her feel comfortable and hide any beginning signs of womanhood she has happening here, and she probably doesn't, like I said, I mean, it's only noticeable in thin, thin tank tops, but I felt like it was something I needed to do, and in part, I was inspired by this client, so I told her about it, the client. I let her know about my experience and, and how my daughter's experience, you know, how my client's experience had inspired me to change that for my daughter. And even better, my daughter loved the experience and was, you know, it was good for our bonding as mother and daughter, honestly. Of course, in my case, the relationship with my daughter was actually strengthened by the bra experience. But in the case of a narcissistic mother, that type of experience can take a bit of a downturn when the narcissistic mother sees her daughter beginning to develop adult feminine qualities. Okay, you feel me? this is hard to talk about, but I think that when the narcissist is a mother, her jealousy to, toward her daughter is partially related to the fact that her daughter's growing into a woman, and this reminds the narcissist mother that she's getting older and that her daughter will soon be the one people look at, not the mother, okay? Because that's what happens. We all know it happens. I know it's going to happen. And, you know, in a healthy situation, a mother accepts that and is totally cool with it because her daughter is beautiful and amazing and that's wonderful. But in a, in a narcissistic situation, the mother feels slighted, jealous, angry, put upon, uh, you know, shoved aside, so to speak, by her more, you know, younger, more beautiful daughter. Whether, whether the daughter, you know, is trying to be more beautiful or not is irrelevant. It, it just, the mother looks at her daughter and sees 
her youth gone. It makes her feel insignificant, and the feeling of inadequacy is intensified when the mother is concerned that her husband, whether it's the father or the stepfather, is, you know, feeling warmly toward the daughter, or is, um, you know, loves the daughter, or even shares interests with the daughter, okay, that are separate from the narcissist mother's interests, right? So in some cases, the stepfather will or the father will do things that makes the not the narcissist mother believe that she he is sexualizing the daughter like I mentioned before but in this case she will instead of doing something that she should do which is to deal with the father being a dumbass pardon my language she will and that's if he's actually sexualizing her because let remember this is a narcissist woman she might take any attention that he gives to the daughter as sexual attention because she's messed up in the head right but she would retaliate against her own daughter in the same way that a jealous wife would retaliate against someone who is actively flirting with her man and trying to steal him away. Although in this case, the daughter obviously isn't trying to steal anybody. That's her father. And, and, and if, you know, in response, unfortunately, the codependent po the father, the person who is in a codependent relationship with a narcissistic mother, would often pull away from the daughter and focus his affections purely on the mother or any male children in the household and or, you know, which of course further isolates, alienates, and abuses the daughter of a narcissist without, you know, uh, passively abusive. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes to narcissist mothers and sons, there can be, you know, when we bring sons into the picture, right? There's a couple different scenarios. Either the son is also a narcissist and therefore the golden child who can do no wrong, or he's constantly berated for not being good enough, no matter how good he actually is, you know, because the, the narcissist mother... Um, again, of course, he's a projection of herself just like the daughter, but in a different way. And um, even though maybe he's the class president and the valedictorian and the f star of the football team, you know, you, you might have a narcissist mother chasing him around, doing all these little activities with him, but really actually controlling him from every angle, right? So the narcissist mom will use t tears and guilt to control and manipulate him and that's of course if she's not outright ordering him around. As he gets older she may switch her tactics from directly ordering him to do things to manipulating him with guilt and manipulating him with crying and everything else, right? Of course most sons feel protective of, of their mothers and so when there's a narcissist mother involved she's going to twist that love into something unhealthy, okay? Often the narcissist mother will continue controlling both daughters and sons in various ways well into adulthood and of course that's until they recognize the deal and decide to go to no contact or should I say unless they recognize it because we all know that isn't always the case. Some people deal with this for their whole lives until the mother dies and then they're like well now what the hell do I do? I don't know who to tell me. You know, I don't have anyone to tell me what to do. Right? So if you are an adult child of a narcissistic mother you know what I'm talking about. And if you're co-parenting with an ARC mom, sir, or ma'am, you also have a pretty good idea but your perspective is different because you might also have guilt for not knowing how to stop her from abusing your children. As Carol McBride, PhD, who is the the you know queen of all things narcissistic daughters, uh, narcissistic mothers and daughters, um, envy. She says envy allows the insecure mother to feel temporarily better about herself. She says when she envies and then criticizes and devalues the daughter, she diminishes the threat to her own fragile self-esteem. She says envy is a powerful tool in the narcissist's repertoire, and you will see this in the narcissist in the mother's interactions with other people as well. She says envy is a powerful tool in the narcissist's repertoire. Um, she says when directed at the daughter, it creates a feeling of helplessness and painful self-doubt. Interesting, huh? So let's talk about fathers who are narcissistic real quick before we close up today, okay? Fathers of narcissistic uh, who are narcissistic tend to see their kids both as extensions of themselves and as people they need to compete with, interestingly. Kids under a certain age are sort of similar to the narcissist, you know, up until the age of two, really, their normal children are the center of their own worlds and they have very little ability to empathize. And the narcissist often sees children as devious and cunning and sneaky because, you know, they're kids and when, you know, they, they only think of themselves, kids, because and they're not concerned with other feeling other people's feelings at least not when they're little like under the age of two or three most kids will start showing some level of empathy by the time they're three years old so there's that uh, and then 
you know, the narcissistic father is going to be jealous of kids because they steal his supply, so to speak, right? They steal his, um, his narcissistic supply. They cause their mother to focus so much on them that she sometimes forgets that he needs all that attention, right? And this makes him feel infuriated. And sometimes kids make a father remember what he could have been and what he's not. And so if he doesn't, you know, if he doesn't control them, then, you know, uh, it, it, he ignores and neglects them. He, he doesn't want any attention to be taken from him is what it comes down to. So, you know, you might see that a father um, who is a narcissist, uh, you know, he'll be jealous of kids because, the, like I said, they steal the supply. Uh, you know, the father will find himself feeling like he's almost in shock when this happens the first few times, at least. Sometimes it continues forever, but you know, and then he'll argue, you know, with a three-year-old as though the three-year-old's an adult, or he'll criticize a ten-year-old like she's some lowly servant who deserves nothing better than to be criticized, you know. So the narcissistic father feels intense jealousy because the people that he considers his people, um, those who often, you know, those who he feels like belong to him, his wife, his children, his mother, whatever, uh, and whose attention he feels like he's, he deserves and, and he, in fact, is entitled to, um, you know, often he feels like these people are stolen from him in the moment by the child, his own child. And God forbid if it's a stepchild, because if he doesn't feel like that competitor is an extension of his, himself, then he will often ruthlessly batter that kid's emotional health for all he's worth. And he'll leave the kid feeling completely lost and alone in the world. The narcissistic father hates his own children because they cause his favorite sources of narcissistic supply to annoy him ignore him or to favor someone over him okay the people that he quote unquote owns those he feels he's got an unwritten contract with in order uh you know that they all owe him his all of their attention all of the time or at least at every moment that he wants it you know he feels betrayed by them in in a, in a sense that when they love their kids his kids he feels like they're taking away some love from him and you know, he judges them so harshly that his children grow up without the ability to even make their own choices. And like the narcissistic mother, you know, the narcissistic father will also remain the voice in their child's head long after they're dead. You know, daughters of narcissistic fathers often report not getting enough attention or getting what they needed from their dads. And while their fathers might compliment them on their beauty as little children, uh, they'll start cutting them down in sneaky ways as they get older, like maybe talking about how fat they are Ooh, you're getting a little thick around the thighs, girl. Bad attitudes, treating them like they're, you know, less intelligent than they really are because God forbid a girl could be smart, right? Or whatever. For example, you know what I'm saying? Just a few examples. Essentially, they leave the daughter feeling like she's never enough. And as she ends up feeling like she, you know, no one's ever really going to be there for her because she, she, she feels like this constant fear of abandonment, you know, and, and she either becomes commitment phobic you know, where she can't ever be with anybody, or she loves so hard that she leaves proverbial claw marks on the throat of everyone she considers hers. Daughters need to feel adored by their fathers, okay? When And, and when they aren't, they lose. A healthy father who loves his daughter can validate her and help her to realize that she has value and that she doesn't have to settle for some shit like we're all set, we all settled for, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and uh, you know, she she learns that she's special and that she deserves to be loved just for being herself. That's the intense, you know, effect of a good father on a daughter. Daughters of narcissist fathers don't get that gift because they're taught that love is conditional with their father. And when it comes to the sons of narcissistic narcissistic fathers, they'll they'll feel like they never quite measure up. You know, um, they will literally compete with their sons for attention and even in other ways like beating them at every game, for example. You know, sons will respond in one of two ways. They either accept defeat and allow their narc dads to continue being the king of their castles, or they will work really hard to beat them at their own game, and then, of course, potentially become narcissists themselves, just like the daughters who, who are raised by narcissistic fathers who may choose to become narcissists, who may become narcissists themselves if they're not becoming victims of narcissists, okay? Um, in either case, the son of a narcissistic father can never feel really good about himself. Just like it, the daughters of a narcissistic father, they will just feel not good enough. So we're going to sum it all up, shall we? Narcissistic parents are jealous of their children for a few different reasons. 
and they boil down to this. First, the children are always seen as extensions of themselves, and while this can lead to narcissistic supply when the child is used as an object uh, for the narcissist to collect attention, let's say a, a, a narcissistic mother has a very pretty daughter and she starts putting her in pageants, and of course this gains her lots of attention as the mother of this girl. You know, It can also lead to insane jealousy when the narcissistic parent feels slighted, like in the case of that same pageant girl, when that girl grows up and gets some boobs and a butt, her mom might have some real serious issues with her, you feel me? So it can also lead to insane jealousy, and and this type of jealousy, when they feel slighted, it makes them feel betrayed by someone. Mothers are jealous of their daughters in strange ways, like sexual and intellectual competitors, almost in like they're a live-in mean girl, while, you know, fathers are jealous of their kids for, as competitors for attention, specifically for attention. And this is kind of a live-in bully situation, right? And like girls need to be adored by their father for validation, boys need to see that their dad actually believes in them as well. Of course, in both cases, the kids can seem like mirrors to the faults and the shortcomings of the narcissistic parents, right? So what do you do? Well, first you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, okay? And then I, I want to ask you a question. How do you think all of this happens? And what do you think about all of this? What would you add? What have your experiences been if you've dealt with a narcissistic parent, whether it's in the case of your own parent or it's in the case of a narcissist that you're co-parenting with now? Okay, share your thoughts, share your ideas, share your experiences in the comments, and let's talk about it, okay? Um, in the meantime, if you, uh, if you have questions, concerns, things you want to talk about, you can visit queenbeing.com if you want to talk about or learn about narcissism, narcissistic abuse recovery, and narcissistic personality disorder. If you're looking for personal one-on-one -on -one coaching, you can visit me at NarcissisticAbuseRecovery.online. And if you're looking for a free five-day email course designed especially for narcissistic abuse survivors, you can pick that up at NarcissismSupportCoach.com. And one more thing, if you're looking for books on narcissism, narcissistic abuse recovery, or related areas, uh, you know, personal development for people who have been affected by these people, you can visit my um, Amazon page, which you can get to by going to booksangiewrote.com. All right? You guys have a wonderful weekend. I will see you tomorrow for a quick vlog and Sunday as well. See you soon, and have a great week. Oh, and as always, thank you for letting me be a part of your life and a part of your recovery.